Great. Welcome to the Pano Elementary School Board of Directors meeting for February 26th. Uh, on the agenda, the openings, the Pledge of Allegiance for the fourth grade students. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, Bonnie. Bonnie Strange and the fourth grade students. Okay. This is a community service to St. Jude fundraising. We are here t t tonight to talk about our project with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. We had a class meeting in September had, and had a discussion of possible charities or ways to help people. We picked St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Ms. Strange called the hospital and found a person to help us out. It was Donnie J. Anderson, Senior Administrative Assistant of the Child Life Program. We started collecting money. At another class meeting, Meadow had an idea that we could collect money while we were trick-or-treating, so we did. We used a math class to sort, count, and wrap the money, and we had $100. Ooh. We researched Christmas, ha Hanukkah, Kwanzaa traditions, and then made various holiday cards for St. Jude patients, families, doctors, and staff. We also made cheery posters to patients and their families that Donnie put up around the hospital. We made a hello, get well, and a holiday greetings video, including us singing jingle bells for the patients and their families. This is just one of the many emails from Donnie Anderson. Hi, Miss Strange. Thank you and Happy New Year to you and your students as well. I have received your video and have passed it along to other staff. What an adorable bunch of students you have. <laughs> it is such a great thing you are doing with the students. Teaching them the value of giving is important. We are very fortunate that your class has chosen our organization and mission to be a part of. Thank you, Donnie Anderson. We kept bringing in money from home. Then we had $128. Here is a letter that Donnie wrote us. <clears throat> Dear friends of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, thank you so much for thinking of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. It, it, it was a great day to see all of those wonderful Christmas cards you sent us, sent for us. These cards will bring smiles to many of the children's faces. Thank you for helping make that possible. Being diagnosed with a new illness and coming to the hospital can be stressful <coughs> e events for a family. Child life specialists work closely with children and teens to provide non-threatening, age-appropriate explanations and preparations. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital is internationally recognized for its research and treatment for children with cancer and other catastrophic diseases. St. Jude has treated children from 50 states and all around the world, serving as a trusted source of physicians and researchers. Again, thank you for being part of our mission. Sincerely, Donnie Anderson. At our class meetings, we kept talking about other ideas to raising money to St. Jude. Maybe we will have a tag sale. We sent huge valentines created by the members of our class, like this one. Then, we got this card from Donnie. 
Thank you all so much for taking the time to send your video to the patients at St. Jude. The video in Crash Your Class sent brought smiles to many of the children's faces. We thank you for helping make that possible and wanting to support our mission at St. Jude. Know your essers do make a difference. Thank you, Donnie Anderson. For the week before vacation, we visited <coughs> and collected money from each classroom in the school and got about $67. Now we have $195. In the spring, we want to find a special way to give the donations to the hospital. We told Donnie that we wanted to keep the total amount a secret until it's time to present it. If anyone wants to donate to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, they can get the money to our principal or teacher here at Pound Elementary. We would be very grateful. We are really learning a lot from this project. It feels good to try to cheer up children who are ill and give as much money to the hospital that we can collect in one school year. We will keep working on it. Thank you all for listening to us tonight. That was a marvelous yeah, job. job. Right. Congratulations to you two and to you representing your class. You did just a marvelous job. And you know, you are right. You are putting smiles on children's faces who are sick, and you've made, you've made their days, I'm sure. When they get cards from you guys, I've been there. I've seen the children that are sick, and it really means a lot to know that someone else is reaching out and, and saying, hope you feel better. So thank you and your class for doing a marvelous job. Thank you, great job. Thank you for inviting us. Oh, thank you. Okay, public comments. Under public comments, I would like to uh, ask Mrs. DeRosia. She's come here tonight. She spoke to me a little bit about, we all know we need speakers in the auditorium. We have... Um, I know a gentleman that would like to come and talk to our principal. Um, I haven't gotten a hold of him yet. But Mrs. DeRosia has uh, a gentleman also. So would you like to talk about that? Well, I initially am here to request assistance in either fixing or, re or re either restoring or getting new equipment for the multipurpose room, which is used for physical education the musical yearly and for our concerts with our music teacher. So we need to get a system that will serve all three of those purposes. And uh, we have pieces of systems, some of which works and some of which doesn't. And <clears throat> we're in the process of investigating the best way, most efficient, most cost effective way to um, replace the system so that it works the best for everybody. Um, I have a name, you have a few names, and we're hoping to get together on that and, and come up with some way to please everybody so that it works the best for everyone. It's something that's been needed for a long time, and it, it seems to get brought up at the floor meeting every year, which is going to be next week, and I'm mm -hmm. sure someone in the community will say, where is your speaker system? You know, we can't hear you. So it is a, Excuse me, yeah. but I thought um, a couple of weeks ago they had gotten a grant or something for $700 or $800 for something towards the speaker system. Is that anything that you knew about? No. I, I, I saw it on TV. I knew they got a grant. It was 6 or $700. And it was for the town guy? The town guy. The town for the town guy. I have no knowledge. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I have no knowledge. Okay, let me, let me check into that. I'll call Karen. I know they said for the town meeting, but I mean, why can't we combine it together? Well, that is something what you're asking for, isn't that? Doesn't that tie in with us, with what we need? I would think so, yes, because the gym has been used for bigger meetings with the town before as well. Right. Okay. If you could get the gentleman's name, and actually if you could get... I have an email out to him okay. as we speak, uh, hoping to hear back from him. Right. Thank you. He has serviced other schools. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if we can come up with that. Oh, that's great. I think we should work on that. It's something our school really needs. Absolutely. Thank you very much for bringing that. Thank well, you. And thank you again, Mrs. Strange. That was very welcome. Thank you. 
Okay. Can you do totally the gentleman's name is uh Okay, under the next one. No other public comment. No, no. Action items. Uh, the treasurer's report for January was enclosed. Is there any uh, comments on that? Questions? Or the there was no budget no transfers. The consent agenda. So moved. Okay, I need a second. Second. Motion been made second. Is there any uh, questions on it? Is that what we're going again? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just on the minutes, uh, we mentioned uh, oh, uh, overtime for a woman named Judy and didn't give her a last name. Is it business? Business. 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 If we can annotate that somehow, we would Yeah, I think so. Is there anything else? I don't know. No. Anything else under the consent agenda? Yeah. That's your willingness and everything that falls into it? No. Okay. All right, hearing none, um, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. All right, I'm, I'm the third one, so if it's unanimous, it passes. Okay, so we're down to the principal's report. Um, what I wanted to do this evening is to take a look at the action plan and goals and steps that um, we've had in place, um, you know, for this school year. And I wanted to, um, like I said, we have a school improvement team that um, we meet just about once a month. And this last month, we took a look at um, the different action steps in the area of literacy and reading, and as well as math, and on the back side, parent involvement and school-wide climate. And we went through each one of the action steps, and um, you know, we took a look at them in the sense of how well are we using these action steps, and what do we need to do to tweak some of them. So if you look at um, Action step number one under the area of literacy and reading. Um, initially, it said monthly grade level team meetings. Well, now here at Palma, we have PLC weekly meetings. And I think that's really made a difference um, for classroom, title, specialists, and special ed. And this is a time where teachers get together and staff, they get together, they take a look at data, um, they take a look at their um, you know, the Common Core, best practices and what we need to do for individual students at times. So um, rather than monthly grade level team meetings, they're really Pownal PLC weekly meetings and that's really made a difference within our school, I believe. On the second one there, it says to regroup children to provide additional intervention following major testing windows in September and January. And we do this on an ongoing basis, not just in uh, September and January, but this um, this is a continual process. So if a team is meeting at a PLC during that weekly meeting, they may be regrouping children because of a common assessment that they gave their students or um, taking a look at map scores. So it's not really just that um, September and January time frame. Um, we're, of course, continuing professional development. This latest session that we had in January, there was a, a great... Um, a group of in-service sessions that teachers were able to sign up for and attend. It was, you know, really one of the best um, number of sessions that I've seen in a number of diff different districts that I've taught. So professional development is ongoing. Um, let's see, as far as the reading ones, what more? Uh, number eight, the tutors from the area colleges. We don't have this year. I know Mary Natalizia has worked with uh, Williams College in the past, mm -hmm. and she's tried to institute that again this year, and we've been unsuccessful. But you know that's something that we that we may want to um, to, to continue to uh, strive for. I wonder if uh, instead of just Williams College, does the Southwest Vermont, is the Southern Vermont College do that? Mm 
Uh, let's see here. And of course, we're going to continue the summer bookmobile uh, for this next year. Um, under math, the first one there, uh, the math lab for classes to be assigned to attend bi-weekly and classes do go twice weekly. Um, classroom teachers where it has on here that they will attend the lab with their classes and classroom teachers are within their own classroom um, providing interventions for students while other students are, are in the lab at times. So it's not like teachers are going into the lab at the same time as the students. I always felt that we were one step ahead of other buildings because we did have a math lab. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand why we, we would even be below when we have a math lab. I don't know if we need to look at that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to me. Well, I mean, we're below in, um, in, in reading and math as well as writing. We have main gains in, in writing, in the area of writing. Um, especially in uh, this last year. In writing, our fifth graders were at 46% 46 um, advanced and proficient. And the prior year, I don't think we were able to do the writing because of the um, because of Irene. Irene. Mm -hmm. And the year before that, 20%. So we, we've definitely made gains there. But we can always strive to make better gains in the area of reading and writing, as well as math. But we do have the math lab. And I think, to Cindy, and uh, for those watching, and Bonnie can help here, but um, the curriculum teams, SU wide in uh, literacy, but more particularly in math, have been looking at materials in a pilot in different schools over the last two years. And really, I think this summer is the summer where we end up landing on some recommendations for our, um, mathematics uh, core materials. So we're watching, um, I think it's called the Bridges and Singapore Math, and there's one other, I believe. And Pat Conway has been here quite a bit this year, um, working within classrooms as well, and working with students. And I think that's going to make um, and you have to realize that the test that we, that the students, the kneecap tests were taken back in October. So that's really efforts from the previous year and not really this year. It's not really indicative of what we've done so far this year. Yeah. I think the PLC, as you write, will help as well with the communication and the consistency and in the instructions. So. On the back side, if we take a look at parental involvement and homeschool connection, um, well, like I said, at one of the previous board meetings, all of our teachers now have uh, their websites up and going. We're doing a monthly newsletter out to parents, and that's on our website as well. So and we want to continue communication there. Uh, the first one on there to invite parents, community, and selectmen to panel Proud Night or Pride Night. And we want to expand that. We want... Um, you know, we want them here for all family events and not just um, whatever the, we haven't had that this year, the um, Palmer Pride Night, but we want them to be involved in all of our events and not just one specific event. Um, number three, uh, to track parent involvement in parent conferences. And I think we were at about 98% of our parents attending parent-teacher conferences this year. And I thought that that was a great, great percentage. Do you have a percentage on how many people use the website? No, I don't. Yeah. I don't know whether there's a... Do you think that people are? Yeah, I know um, families yeah, you know, do that. as far as um, taking a look at homework, spelling words. Um, let me see. There are... Do you think there's any parents that doesn't have a computer that... Well, we know that our students can take home their um, their netbooks in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. Not that they have Wi-Fi at home, but they would have that capability of having their netbook um, to work on. Um, but we do send home a hard copy to families of the newsletter as well. Um, 
the third or the fourth one, the school-wide climate, there were only four action steps here, but we, you know, we have a ton more under PBIS. Um, the implementation of Tier 1, 2, and 3 of PBIS, we, we're going to continue the incentives of the PAWS, the Golden PAWS, the Blue Tickets, the Golden Plungers that you all laughed at one of the <laughs> board meetings as well. Um, our committee meets twice a month. Um, our coordinators, myself and Karen Theoret, we attend regional meetings. We're looking to attend the Best Summer Institute, participating in webinars and trainings. Um, you know, continue the yearly rollout of the building exp expectations. This year we had a parent information night on PBIS. Um, and of course at the end of the year we have PBIS surveys. And actually this next March, uh, staff meeting we're going to be doing a PBIS survey as well for our staff. So I just wanted to kind of present some of the action steps tonight and where we are in the process and, and we're going to get there. We are going to improve in the areas. It's, I know it takes time but we're implementing a lot of new things and um, we're really really working hard here in our building. I like this. Under action, a complete annual survey and bullying for students real person for pushing for getting rid of bullying. I mean, it's got to be brought to the top. That's good. Any other questions on that in the area of... Uh, any action steps? Mm -hmm. uh, to reach number two, uh, regroup children to provide additional intervention following major testing windows. For children not meeting the standards at a great level. I was just curious, you do anything on the, on the other end? We do, and we do that continuously. Um, we so take it's a look both at, ways. Mm -hmm, it is both ways. Um, and teachers that are here um, can comment on that as well. It's not just that we're regrouping our students that are struggling. We have to take a look at those high students as well. Um, Some of the students go, for instance, to another class to have their math because they would be more challenged in, in, exactly. with a, another grade level. Um, in my room, I have independent groups that move ahead because they're ready according to the testing results. That's school wide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Yeah, Very good. Excellent. We can also comment on the fluency of the presentation of your students tonight, Bonnie, and uh, your present. The, not only, yeah, the yeah, expression, expression and presentation oh, skills, looking up at the camera, looking at the audience, so uh, very, very impressive and all, all part of the literacy um, efforts. Thank you. Um, that was Caleb Green and Nikita Noyes Martel, by the way. Yes. I apologize for not introducing them, uh, but yeah. we've practiced so many times with just get up and go <laughs> that <laughs> That's I forgot. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> She, they both did a marvelous she job. Thank you so much. Uh, I recognize her. I know the family. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, okay. Cheers report. Update on Oak Hill project. Okay, Mr. Richard, I want to share with you today that I got a phone call that the gentleman is trying to get a permit for a three apartment a sewer permit. And I guess he's gonna be told he has to wait till he buys it. <laughs> The, the, the director of the wastewater plant called me and I said, uh, don't issue nothing yet. Well, the good news, I mean, the good news, I think you saw in the last email that um, they finished their excavation of the mm -hmm. uh, contaminated soil and um, was sent up to the state. The gentleman that issues uh, um, called a smack letter, site management. Activity closed or something. I forget what SMAC stands for. Um, basically, it's a clean site. It's on vacation or something. We'll be back for another week or two, so we got to sit around for him to get back. And, um, I think we're inching closer each day. So, the, but it's finally it's cleared up. It's clean. It's should we should get the go ahead soon then. That's the game plan. That's how I understand all the communications have been flying around the last few days. Are the stairs put back? Uh, well, the uh, concrete ones were demolished and take, taken out because we had to clean underneath them, but the wooden ones were put back. Okay. And that was all done with the buyer in observation. And, okay. you know, but we don't have to replace the... Uh, no. Okay. That's good. So, I, mean, I think it's... 
good news heading in the right direction. We just we just need to be patient. We need to be patient. Well, that bad considering you're supposed to sign last July, so we'll be patient. <laughs> okay. I, the only thing I want to remind our, our board members is uh, Monday night uh, when we need to be at the school here for, uh, I believe it's 7 o'clock. Yep. Uh, the school is the first to, uh, and you and before? 7, right? 7. 7 o'clock. Is it the 4th? Like is it the yeah. 4th? Yes, I believe it is. Probably is the first time. Yes. We, we really don't have too much time. Monday's the fourth. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so 7 o'clock at the school. We'll put it on the board. I'll, I'll oh, kind of okay, read it that'd be great, you. yes. And I wanted to ask you about the light. Is that uh, going to be fixed on the side? It will. Okay, that's important. Um, email today it, from Rich saying that when they came over, they didn't have something that they were going to come back and so that'll be taken care of. Okay, and I'll, good. I'll check with Rich in the morning. All right, that'll be good, because that's a really important. Um, a lot of uh, our elderly citizens come, and it's, it's so hard that they have to be able to see to get down that, mm -hmm. that kind of arena. Okay. Um, unfortunately, Gudrun is sick, so she couldn't make her last. She sent her apologies. And she's right, though. We didn't want her to show up and share with us her sickness, but. We did miss her. We missed you, Gudrun. <laughs> okay, so um, I don't have anything else, so we'll move right on to our superintendent and our chief officer. I'll just um, share with you at tomorrow's uh, SBSU board meeting, we will be um, receiving a presentation by the uh, school effectiveness coach that's been working with MAU and Monument Mara Hart. Those are schools that are either in their first year or uh, beyond the, the uh, multiple year mark for schools in improvement. But they do have implications for activities that have been happening here at Cal Panel. They're very similar to the activities that have been uh, happening here. And we'll also highlight uh, two or three areas under the board goals of um, initiatives or efforts that um, we're working on SUI. And that one's at, that's at 7, right? It's yes. at 7 tomorrow at the middle school. Mr. Pepper, do you have anything else for us? Uh, just if there's any questions on the budget stat report, and then I just wanted to um, um, give you an update if any of you have followed, um, I think it's H256 or 265 about setting the tax rates. Um, passed the house and what um, what they've done is a little differently than what we forecasted in the annual reports. Um, it still needs to pass the Senate and signed by the governor, but all indications are it's going to have some smooth sailing. But um, they're talking about putting the base education spending pre equalized pupil at 91.51, which is higher than the 89.15 that we had budgeted. That's good news. Um, that gives you more flexibility in, um, in, in your cost per pupil uh, formula. Uh, the downside to that is they increased um, the base eds, uh, the base tax rate from um, 89 cents to 94 cents. I was forecast to 93 cents. The net result of both of those, because as, as I said, the base ed spending is positive, the increase in the tax rate is negative. But the net result of both of those together combined in the formula will be a reduction in your forecasted tax rate from an 11 cent increase to a 9 cent increase. Um, so, a little bit news. We'll take whatever we can get. That's right. Other than that, I didn't have any. Is there any, anything else that we need to wrap up? No? Nothing other? All right, well, this is uh, Is that what the agency is? That's it. I want to talk about that. Yes, okay. That's no. another. You can't. Yes, that's under other. All right. Uh, I contacted Red Cross. 
at the set the set survey the preliminary fill out. And we have it here. And uh, Mr. Phillips and Mr. Valley have uh, done the best they could on the survey. And there's some questions here that uh, we let uh, uh, Mr. Phillips and I that decide or the board can decide. But uh, they are uh, on page two. So what happens next is that we do what we can on the uh, on the survey, and then we make an appointment with the contact of the Red Cross. They'll come down here and see Mr. Phillips and Mr. Valley. And then they'll do the survey. Okay. And then after, if we're approved as a Red Cross site, then there's a contract that will have to be signed between the school and the, uh, and the Red Cross. Here's, I only have one copy. I sent the contract to everybody by email. It said, well, we can get <coughs> to the contract. On the, on the survey itself, though, we have to uh, point of contact or authorized use of facility point of contact with open facility and all, alternate point of contact. Does the board need to decide that? Or, or? Well, I think we need our office where we give. Pardon? Wouldn't it go to our office for review, the contract, the actual agreement? Okay. Um, we'll just do a quick review of it. Yeah. That, that's, that's weeks down the road. But yeah, it is. I plan. didn't get this. Okay. Yeah. I'll do some of it. Okay. Because they'll come actually to do a tour, isn't that what you said, Jim? They'll come on site yes. after you fill the survey out. Right. So when the survey is completed as best as we can. Yes, right. right. Yeah. And then they come for a um, visit. A physical, physical survey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometime in the next, uh, uh, before we complete the survey, is, is these contacts. Any comments or thoughts on that? How they well, I think... Um, that was one of the questions that was that was brought up when uh, they thought they were there was a need to use the school, and again that's why we brought the subject up. Um, who should be the authorized use? Who authorizes it? I think you know we need to work together with our uh, our principal. Um, as far as a pet shelter, the board I think decides whether it's going to be a pet shelter, which to me I don't see where we can do that. Um, I don't know. I think we need to sit down with, uh, with Todd and go through some of this. And add, you know, it, it just can't be. Uh, but when we have to work with like the uh, rescue and fire and police, I mean, it ha yeah, we yeah. have to have all, all of the players here. I, I've but as far as point of contact, the alternate point of contact, I mean, uh, it could have been um, at one point in time. Well, Joel Howard, I believe, was the uh, chief of police. He was involved uh, back when uh, Ms. Foster was here because they had an emergency or something, and he was the one that came over. I mean, Joel's still in the sheriff's department. I mean, he lives right across the street. I'm sure he would help because he's in the fire department as well. Right, but I'm saying we would have to invite him. We'd have to sit down with multiple players and, and just got filled to fill this thing out. So what you're saying, Jim, is this has to go up to the... Uh, well, well, let me finish my So the, the, as far as uh, Todd and I see it, uh, the three points of contact need to be completed or approved by the board. The pet, pet shelter needs to be uh, answered by the... They're asking if we can use it for a pet shelter. I think we're all going to say no on that. Uh, and then there's some questions about the, uh, the kitchen. And... Uh, Facility ownership. I'm not sure how we answer that, but there's some questions on here that. School owns it. Yeah, the part of the part on the form that needs to be completed. Yeah, I'll take that. Okay, I yeah, I would like that. That would be another question that was that what was brought up. I'm not sure how the other schools do it, but if the building had to be used for an emergency. I would imagine, number one, the town would be involved. The town would have to be, um, as far as uh, who's cooking. Who's going to cook? If you get 100 people in here, you know, we need to feed them. I'm not the sure. Red, the, Red, the Red Cross, uh, 
once you enter into this agreement, the Red Cross is in control. Yeah, they'll, bring they'll, in, they'll, they'll bring in their cooks, they'll bring in their food, they'll bring in their stuff, and they just do it. it, it, it and a very quick chance I've had to look at this, um, page three, the limitations of use facility, all our other facilities, it's, uh, the limitation is that schools operate and you can't use it. Uh, very few cases where there's going to be an emergency, where the school uh, is, in is, in, is in session, but in that rare occasion, and actually the Red Cross has actually recommended that that's what we say, is you can only use this when school's not in session. Um, it's on page seven under limitations of facility use. Right now, you've got checked the facility will be available any time during the year. Um, page three. Our our limitations has typically been when schools in session is being used. Yeah, and that's basically. And what I think I Jim and I um, we took a look at this and filled in what we could. Tonight we wanted to give it to the board, take it back, um, look at some suggestions that you all have and bring it back to us and we can we can fill in some of the missing pieces or um, any questions but I think it's a uh, well just so you know the middle school is porch pets <laughs> what they can get crates and yeah, yeah. It's, it's cumbersome but I don't know why that ended up being the case but they, they, they do allow pets to be I guess that must have been, that might have been a restriction with that new generator that came in. Yeah, it could have been. Uh, well, it was also that um, several of the elderly people will have a pet that they'll bring with them to the shelter, and then it becomes difficult to figure out the transportation and what well, do you do with the pet. You're and actually right, because we found that people wouldn't, even if they were um, in a disaster area, they wouldn't leave their home if they had to leave their pet behind. So. We had many during Irene show up at the um, middle school. So I think just for clarification for those watching, when we say that the school can be used when school is not in session, it doesn't mean weekends or um, vacations. What it means is during an emergency, it's likely that the school would be closed. So in the case of Irene, the, the districts were all closed, I think it was a week. Um, and the middle school was used for what three days, I think, or four. Right, and the and the, per, and the reason for that is if there if there's a limited issue here in town that you know 346 got flooded out or something, um, but you were still operating and they needed some place to put people. We had the firehouse. They, you may they still want to have firehouse. that conversation, but right. you, you don't want them to have the ability to come and say, "Oh, by the way, Todd." We're, we're, taking we're taking over. Taking we're shutting it. your school down, whether you like it or not. We're going to or we're going to use the cafeteria. Please make other arrangements or something like that. You know, you have to think about it. <clears throat> so I, the sense that I'm getting is trying to go forward on this is that the Todd's the focal point on this. I'm your I'll be your worker. <laughs> we work together. Okay, and then uh, uh, we'll get this thing completed yeah. as best we can. If the uh, board members could take a look at it, and uh, yeah, uh, I just ask that we we are able to whatever you decide to write in it. You know, I think we need to look at it before you send it forward. Okay. Well, it's going to go forward. Yeah. Roughly, Phil, the, the the Red Cross said this: do the best you can. Okay, and then uh, as far as the we had to measure the toilets, how high the toilets were. There's some strange stuff in here, and, and that's all been done. Then the rest of the Red Cross can come down and actually say if, we, if we're capable of being a shelter. Mm -hmm. is, a, is a toilet problem in that uh, uh, we only recognized uh, two toilets for the public to use as a shelter. And reading into the detail of the Red Cross, that's it's 25 people per toilet. Mm -hmm. So that would cut us off at, at 50. And somewhere in here we said we're looking to house 200. So uh, there are, there's, a lot of, there's going to be a lot of give and take. We're a long way from signing a contract, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Todd and Mr. Valley have done a, as best a job as possible as physically describing the facility and now the Red Cross will come in and uh, the points that are still open uh, I think can be, uh, uh, you know, contacts and things like that can be after the Red Cross does their survey. No sense to going through all that work if they reject us as a, as a possibility. Yeah, I don't think but yeah, when the time comes that we need to sit down with different players and we'll, uh, we'll invite the, uh, the emergency manager of our town, we'll invite the, 
fire chiefs for different ways. So, yeah, it looks good. You got a lot of. Uh, Should we go so, forward? So, Cindy, I'm having trouble apartment? hearing. Um, I just wanted to make sure I heard what you said. So, you're you're thinking that you would want to meet with the fire and police before this is. Um, given over for because well, I think what your point was. I'm just repeating yeah, so that we can yeah. hear it on the the TV as well. Um, I think your point was that the Red Cross would come in on on what we could fill out in order to see whether it's worthwhile continuing. It's a viable facility. A viable right. facility. Is that what so, you're talking about? Yeah. And mm -hmm. after that is happens, then we then can the sit down see. before we sign anything and with the police and go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I just, I didn't, if I couldn't hear, I wasn't sure we were being picked up on the mm -hmm. TV. And before we, we send this out, I think board members should take a look at oh, this, yeah. Yeah. bring it back to us next month yeah. with revisions and changes, yeah. and then from that we would send it in. Right. Yeah. That's yeah, mm -hmm. we have time. Okay. The, the next step is make the appointment. Should we make that after the next board meeting? Yeah, I would. I would. Okay. I would have everyone take a look at this. Bring it back to us next month for revisions and changes, and we can do that, and then send it in after that. Because uh, next month after election, you know, we, we may have new board members. Okay. And then just just uh, clarification. There's a questions out here for the for the fire department. I did send that to Joel. Uh, to the, I haven't gotten it back yet, but he's not. Can you answer the fire department questions? Okay. Good. Good. So if you could email um, the, contract. the contract to uh, uh, Rick and uh, email one to me, I'd appreciate uh, everybody. it. Everybody. Yeah, that's even better. All right. Can we keep these? Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. 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 Right, good, Take I, those and make revisions and changes. And I could, yeah, I was going to say it's a lot of material to hear and absorb in the yeah. last 10 minutes. Yeah. No, it's good. You did a good job. Is there uh, any other business to come before the board? Right. Seeing none, I guess. I'd like to take a motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Right. Motion made second. All right, I'll see you two tomorrow night.